Okay guys, this is the last lecture on World War II and this is focusing on the war in the Pacific. So after the attack on Pearl Harbor, the Japanese strategy was try to gain control of as many islands in the Pacific as quickly as they could. So by 1942, 1942 Japan was in complete control of the Pacific and also into the eastern side of mainland Asia um, as we know with the attack on Pearl Harbor it wasn't just the attack on Hawaii it was the attack on Wake Island Guam Philippines Midway Island so all of our naval bases we had to go through and recapture those naval bases to be able to get close to mainland Japan to try to defeat the enemy so we come up with the concept of island hopping so trying to bypass the heavily fortified Japanese post, we decided to try to capture nearby islands. And so kind of our little stepping stones, we jump from Pearl Harbor and we start t heading towards Midway Island and Wake Island. And from there, kind of our stepping stones to get to mainland Japan. Um, when we are able to capture those islands, we set up airfields where we can start to create those naval bases, airfields to be able to fly over to be able to start bombarding major portions of Japan. This also also was the emphasis to let China take care of the Japanese on the mainland as the allies began to take control back in the Pacific. So we partner up with China to try to defeat Japan. And so looking at the map here, uh, the Battle of Midway is going to be one of those significant battles and is the turning point. So you see the Hawaiian Islands and how close Midway was. But we had a lot of gain to ground there in the Pacific to be able to get close to mainland Japan. So looking at some of those significant battles, one of the first is the Battle of Coral Sea. This took place in May of 1942. Why this was such an important battle was one of our partners in the Pacific was Australia. And the Battle of the Coral Sea is off the Australian coast. So if we had lost the Battle of the Coral Sea, this would give Japan the ability to try to take control of Australia, which is something we could not afford to lose. They inflicted heavy losses on the Japanese fleet, and as the first time fighting was all done by a carrier um, based aircraft. So neither fleet saw or fired a shot directly at each other during this battle. Battle of Midway is considered the turning point. It is exactly six months to the date after Pearl Harbor. Uh, so June of 1942, thousand miles northwest of Honolulu. Um, and this is where we kind of seek revenge. We launch a devastating attack um, from Pearl Harbor. And so this led the American fleet into a destructive combat. Um, we are fighting uh, in a great naval battle also along with our aircrafts. And so we destroy the naval fleet, the, or the Japanese naval fleet, um, and they lost four of their vital carriers, something that they're not gonna be able to recover from. Because one of the weaknesses for Japan was their lack of support. Supplies. This is why they were trying to expand in the first place. So when they lose a naval ship, they don't have the means to um, replace it, where the United States could start replacing their naval ships at a rapid pace. So for after the Battle of Midway, the United States is going to be on the offensive um, in the Battle of the Pacific, and Japan is going to be on the defensive, trying to maintain their control, trying to protect and keep as many islands to keep the United States away from mainland Japan as much as possible. After FDR's passing in April of 1945 and with the surrender of Germany in 1945, we now have the Allied powers kind of helping the United States focus on Japan. So in July of 1945, we have the Potsdam Conference where Truman, Churchill, and Stalin meet. This is where they issue an ultimatum to Japan. Prior to this meeting, we had tested our atomic weapons. So Truman had learned about the Manhattan Project when he was sworn in as president. We had had our Trinity test for the atomic bombs to see just a little of what the firepower of these weapons were going to have. Um, after this is when they issued the ultimatum to Japan. So they either surrender or face prompt and utter destruction. For the Japanese, it's not necessarily sure what they you know, comprehended as prompt and utter destruction. To them, they probably imagined something like a bomb raid, like the Battle of Britain across major cities of Tokyo, Nagasaki, and Hiroshima throughout the country. Um, I don't think anybody in the Japanese military or the Japanese government could fathom 
truly the firepower of the atomic weapons. And so they dropped this ultimatum and thousands of leaflets all across Japan trying to appeal to the Japanese people. But the Japanese were a unique fighting force. Um, nationalism was well rooted um, within their society. And that's where, you know, the use of kamikaze pilots, which were introduced at the Battle of Milo Bay um, in regards to the Philippines, um, you know, the kamikazes, it wasn't a punishment. It was seen as an honor. It was actually dishonorable to come home alive and not victorious. So, you know, trying to appeal to the Japanese people to try to get them to surrender was not something that they were willing to do. So they start firebombing the capital city of Tokyo in March of 1945, and they try to take the two major islands that are closest to mainland Japan, one being Iwo Jima and the other Okinawa. So um, they needed Iwo Jima because it was a hub, you know, that could be their central location. They could fly planes directly from Iwo Jima over Japan. It was a 25 day assault where 7,000 American soldiers were killed. Um, they were not prepared for how well infiltrated the Japanese people were um, within the island of Iwo Jima and even Okinawa where even more people were killed. And it was a lot more difficult. They had the intricate underground network of tunnels where the Japanese soldiers hit they were not willing to surrender and so this really painted a vivid image for the American government about what it would be like to try to conduct a land invasion of Japan so comes into question whether or not to use the atomic bombs um, why the weapon of mass destruction you know, the Manhattan Project was developed to develop the atomic bombs because out of fear that Germany was developing the same uh, same technology with Germany out of the picture we had spent over two billion dollars on these projects we actually had five atomic bombs two that were operable three that could be operable um, very soon and um, you know, Truman had to, you know, make a really tough decision. You know, he was statistically getting uh, information that a land invasion could cost up to a million American soldiers' lives to try to take over Japan by land, something that he was not willing to compromise, okay, or to give up to try to get Japan to surrender. Plus, he had an answer for this bill. You know, if they exposed to the American public how much they had spent on the development of these weapons and then didn't use them, um, you know, it could cost people their jobs. So he decides to use the Manhattan Project and to use these atomic bombs, even though it went against the wishes even of the scientists. You know, there was a petition signed by the scientists in the Manhattan Project trying to persuade President Truman not to use them because they knew the aftermath, the radioactive poisoning that was going to take place in Japan, um, which is going to impact future generations who weren't even born yet, um, that were going to have to suffer um, through those painstaking years as a result in the use of these weapons. So we had given the Potsdam Declaration, Japan refused to surrender. So on August 6, 1945 is when the first atomic bomb was used. The uh, B-29 bomber, the Enola Gay, is going to fly over. They knew they had a special weapon, but they had no idea the magnitude of what they were about to drop on Japan, um, the pilots of the Enola Gay. When they flew over, killed about 180,000, 70,000 were killed instantaneously. That number, of course, is going to rise because of the radiation poisoning. Um, 60,000 burns and radiation. So you can see there from the picture the complete and utter destruction. Uh, many of those who survived the bombings of um, the atomic bombs describe how disoriented they were just because everything was leveled. Every marker, every you know street sign, they just were completely disoriented of where they were. Um, they waited three days to see if Japan would surrender after the bombing of Hiroshima. Um, when they didn't, the second bomb was dropped on August 9th over Nagasaki. And their similar devastating numbers, 80,000 were killed instantaneously, but that number will rise because of the radiation poisoning. Ultimately, after that point, um, there were still Japanese military who did not want to surrender. You know, they wanted to continue to fight. That was their mentality. But Emperor Hirohito is going to step in. He doesn't want to see any more suffering and devastation to his people. So on August 10th, 1945, Japan asked for peace. Um, one of their 
re uh, request, not a requirement, but a request because they were agreeing to unconditional surrender, was that Emperor Hirohito would remain in power, even if it was just as a figurehead. But he was kind of seen as like a godlike figure in the Japanese culture. So papers are going to be drawn up, and on September 2nd, 1945, General Douglas MacArthur is going to be aboard the USS Missouri inside Tokyo Bay. He will accept the Japanese surrender and the signing of papers, which will officially end World War II. So World War II lasted six years and a day. Um, September 3rd in the United States was considered VJ Day, so victory over Japan, but this is the dawn of the atomic age. So just to kind of recap everything here in regard to World War II, American casualties were about 1 million, one third were deaths compared to other wars, proportion killed by wounds and disease were sharply reduced. This was primarily because of the use of penicillin, also um, owing to blood plasma that is going to be introduced to try to save soldiers um, who are wounded on the battlefield. The Soviet Union had 20 million dead. They had the largest uh, death population out of any of the countries during World War II. Um, we are going to emerge as, you know, mainland virtually unscathed. Of course, we had our losses at Pearl Harbor, but that was really the only mainland destruction that we will experience. Um, months before Pearl Harbor, we were fighting in the Battle of the Atlantic. We were trying to send supplies through the Lend-Lease program um, to Britain. So even though we tried to remain isolated, it's not going to happen as we know and see. Uh, the American War of war was simply more. Um, we had more men, we had more weapons, we had more machines, we had more technology and essentially more money. That gave us the advantage. Plus the fact that we were not having to defend ourselves on our own homeland. So our manufacturing centers were not at risk, our farmlands were not at risk, and so we are going to emerge out of World War II not only as a world power, but now we kind of get the status of a superpower with the induction of atomic weapons.